the first thing so the first thing we are going to do is to talk about the project when I have some kind of an overview on the project let me put this one at left and then open the project at right um, project project where's the project 244 OB project and MS2 and I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna right away open it with um, an editor so we can uh, um, edit it as we are going through so and we can just put this one at right all right so let's go to MS2 so um, milestone 2 yeah so what we are going to do to uh, talking about the parking module so essentially parking module is what is going to is what's going to use the I don't know why it keeps jumping out um, let me just do it like this so it actually goes to 2 and I'm gonna click over here so it remembers where I am all right so <clears throat> uh, um, essentially with par uh, with parking module you are writing the the main skeleton of the application which um, is going to later on be completed in milestones two to five so uh, it's actually my milestone five milestone two and three you're gonna be writing uh, the uh, guts of the system that is essentially your vehicle and, and a car and a motorcycle so um, a parking module as Alex asked the question earlier is uh, uh, mostly uh, private yeah it does it only has a run function that accesses everything and when you're thinking about it when an application is running the only thing you need to know about it is essentially the uh, uh, the only thing that you needed you needed to do is running and the rest of the stuff is supposed to be done automatically and properly so that's uh, what um, uh, what is important for us and that's uh, what we are going to focus on uh, all the little things that are happening inside the parking application are essentially private calls that is invoking different types of capabilities of the application so when I look at uh, the parking module what it does it essentially it loads uh, uh, everything from the data file brings itself up to date to whatever its last state was either it's brand new with an empty file when the parking uh, the, the parking opens uh, in the morning or it is halfway through the day and the program uh, got exited and now it, the program reruns and it wants to load all the information and start uh, continue um, the day so uh, they are essentially so when the when the parking module starts it loads the file from the hard disk and uh, um, shows the uh, options to the person who's sitting over there and saying what you want to do okay I want to park your vehicle or a customer is here I want to return their vehicle I want to or I want to see what are the park cars that are right now parked in a in the like how many cars are parked and where they are parked inside the parking list everything or when the valet wants to go and pick up the vehicle I want to put the license plate so the program is going to tell me which parking spot the car is in so the valet can go pick it up and bring it back I can close the parking down which is the end of the day which in, in that case everything um, will be wiped out and completely emptied so the, the data file is going to be emptied and all the files that are not parked over the, uh, that are parked will be towed out um, and that's it an exit program is a temporary exit so when you exit the program you can exit and you can run it again and it comes back where it where, you, where it left it so these are the functionalities uh, that uh, the uh, the parking is going to do uh, selecting uh, the type of the vehicle the sub menu that opens when uh, option one of the menu is selected so when you select park vehicle it either says car motorcycle or cancel so if you select car it's it's gonna ask you for the information of the car and park it if it's motorcycle the same and if you say cancel it means you put the thing by mistake and you want to get out and it goes back out 
without doing anything so essentially that's uh, what all these things are so uh, for now the skeleton of our application is not going to park a car when you actually select it or uh, list parked vehicles and things like that so what your uh, application is going to do is simply printing messages that this action was invoked and it's supposed to actually work that way so when somebody selects park vehicle it's going to say parking car depending on if it's a car or a motorcycle okay if it says park vehicle and then motorcycle it's going to show the motorcycle if they select cancel it's going to say cancel parking if they select re return vehicle it's going to do this if it says list it's going to do that if it's going to say find it's going to do this so it simply prints messages for every single menu item from one to four that is selected uh, are we okay with this <laughs> all right are we okay with this all right the application is pretty simple quite frankly if you just sit and work on it you're going to be able to finish it in, in in an hour or two maximum so it's very simple so uh the next thing we are going to do over here to understand what happens when uh close or exit is is, is uh is, is chosen from the menu if that's chosen a bit of programming is supposed to be written so what you what would you do is first because closing or executing the program is something that's going to interrupt the either interrupt or finalize the uh, execution of the application it's got you, ha you have to show them a warning so you can uh, for the first one is going to say this will close the parking all the vehicles will be removed are you sure that's when they are doing close parking if they say yes the program exits and you come out uh, if you say no it goes back and displays the menu again and if any uh, anything other than lowercase and uppercase y and R n is entered you're going to say invalid response only y or yes are acceptable for this you do the exact same thing for the exit program but the difference is that with the exit program over here you are going to, yeah uh, if you, you return uh, if you uh, um, show it like that or you exit the program so it's the same thing but the messages are different one says this will terminate the application and save the data the other one was close the parking all vehicles will be removed which means after exiting program if you rerun the application all the data is there and you can continue but if you close down the parking that the parking will be emptied and nothing will be in it all these things will be implemented later of course uh, are we okay down to this point so be to be able to accomplish such thing you would need to uh, create of obviously a parking class and uh, uh, you need the following you need a file name that holds uh, the file or possibly the path of the data file uh, of an unknown size which means you need to have it dynamically allocated um, uh, and uh, uh, parking has a menu object for the main menu so uh, parking has a you remember has a it's not inheritance it, it it has a property called menu uh, main menus that 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 main menus job is to show the the main menu that you see the the main menu that we had up there so with the six options that we had uh, so um, yeah so this is what main menu is going to display to do that uh, the parkings constructor should initialize the main menu with the indentation being zero and the title being parking menu select an option select an action so these two are going to get initialized and then inside the body of the constructor you will populate the main menu with these values with park vehicle return vehicle and so on and so forth one once one by one uh, are we okay with this also parking has another object over here 
also parking has another object over here that is another menu and thus one, this one is the sub menu for the car and motorcycle and castle in case they select the first one uh, first option of the menu the sub menu should be shown so uh, this uh, sub menu should be in uh, initialized with a one and select type of a vehicle as title and uh, after it is initialized inside the constructor you should uh, uh, populate the the menu with car motorcycle and cancel and that's will be that will be the sub menu that you have if you believe other properties are needed and it's very possible that it is based on the, your design or whatever add any properties that you want constructor is uh, implementation so the uh, parking uh, can be created with uh, uh, one C string with an unknown size that tells shows what the data size is what sorry what the data file is so it starts with a data file and if that string is null or empty obviously your parking is invalid so you have to uh, you, you set the parking to an invalid state uh, it will call and load the data file uh, data file so it will call the load data file function so you will create a mockup function called load data and in that one uh, you're just going to print the message or something uh, you will see the execution and you you will know so uh, for all these things that you see that I say call the da load data function create mockup function functions that they just print messages or even if you, if they are not just put a comment in it so you know later on you have to implement the load data functionality in it so you call the load data function if it returns true you will populate uh, the parking and menu vehicle uh, parking and vehicle menus if it didn't then it's an is it, it is in an empty uh, uh, invalid empty state then who cares so if it is it returns false you're gonna print error in data file and uh, you set the class to an empty state are we okay with the constructor all right and I see half of you are not answering the poll I'm hoping that that means yes all right what the destructor will do will save the data file uh, call the da save data file function and uh, then it will make sure that there is no memory leak which means it's going to deallocate all the resources of the of the parking uh, parking application and parking parking application is uh, is not for for rule of three uh, you should prevent copying of uh, uh, parking uh, application so parking application cannot be copied and we mentioned it in class which if you want to prevent something you simply write the prototype for the uh, a copy constructor and copy assignment in the header file inside the class but instead of uh, creating uh, implementation for it right in front of the prototype you write equals to delete so in whatever class that you have we already mentioned this but um, uh, anyways whatever class that you have to prevent its copying what you do you create the const co copy constructor and then you write over equal to delete which means this foo is not supposed to be copied and for the copy assignment you simply write operator it doesn't matter what the return thing is because you just don't want it to copy right so in here uh, again the same thing constant full reference and you're gonna say delete and that's gonna uh, make sure that uh, uh, prevents that copy copying an assignment to actually happen so that's uh, uh, I'm gonna say to prevent copying an assignment are we okay with this all right why did I think someone has a question oh yes uh, let me see uh, can menu get copied or assigned to other menu at this milestone is then that just what I just mentioned car I just mentioned that menu 
if you prevent its copying in assignment, then how can it? I don't understand the question. Kai, you have a microphone to talk to to talk with by any chance? Yeah, yeah. You talk about the parking class or the menu class, or both the class cannot be copied. No, no. Menu and parking, they are both are not allowed to be copied. Okay. I, I don't want to give students redundant stuff. So copying and all the stuff, we're going to do it in the next stage. You've already done lots of copying and stuff in the in the workshop, so there is no reason. And logically, why do you want two parkings in one application? Does it make sense? It doesn't, right? And even if, even if I wanted to allow you to copy it, the fact that each object has a data file will make the copying and assignment a tedious task how to handle the file which one is going to be you know what i mean Kyle? okay yeah so because okay. of that i said neither menu nor uh, parking they cannot get copy all right and thank you hey, i have another question yes go ahead about the constructor mm -hmm. uh, there's a file called parking data dot csv is it just a dummy file oh is there such a uh, is there such a thing inside the thing I have a file actually yeah uh, in the test program <laughs> oh no 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 that's just a name I want to see if you actually allocate properly or not that could be schmigly dingy if you want to you can put anything oh, it's just a string I want to see if you actually allocated and deallocated the things properly or not okay I get it Thank so you. you just allocate and keep the data file you're not doing anything with it the action of right. actually opening the file and doing all the good stuff you're supposed to do is in, for, in later stuff. Remember, what we are creating is a mock-up of a system. It looks like it works, but it does nothing. Got it? Okay, thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right. So, so that's that. And please keep the questions coming. So for private member functions, uh, um, so we are saying for now, these are, uh, these are just mock-up functions. You mostly print messages displayed in the mock-up messages. So when you look at the mock-up messages, what they are, those are the ones that, that uh, when we are saying over here, this function prints this, you have to go back up in mock-up functions and see which one is what. Okay, so uh, is empty function. Uh, is empty function returns true if parking, you know that it returns if it's in a safe empty state or not. So that's that. Uh, parking status function. A parking status function looks, acts like uh, a function that is going to show uh, um, the status of the parking every time the user is using the function. So as soon as it, as soon as it adds a file, it's going to tell how many cars and motorcycles are parked in this thing something like that so what what's going to happen it's going to actually add it's going to give you a stat of everything in the function and a title at the top for now because it's not functional you're just printing a message valet parking and you go to new line that's all so the status will be added in milestone five so just prints this one and that's it okay um so the park, park vehicle function, uh, it does not receive or return anything. Um, uh, it, uh, what it will do is essentially showing the, the sub menu and based on user selection, it either parks a car or motorcycle or cancel, which essentially it means it will print these messages uh, um, based on uh, um, the selection of the user. So it shows the submenu, it sees what the submenu is returning, and based on that, it's going to print one of those three messages. Are we clear with this? And it's, it's not a bad idea to actually um, bring up the actual application. I think I have it here. So, oh, the network's thingy. Let me just reconnect. I'm just bringing milestone two, 
So I'm going to execute it and show it to you as we are talking about it so you know exactly what needs to be done. Okay. So yeah, so this, what I mean by this is that, so um, park vehicle, so as you see, this is the tester program that is running, it's testing a few things over there, and then it says valet parking, that's the message that is printed, then it says parking menu, select an action, now if I actually select over here one, it's going to ask me what you want to do, if I say one again, it's going to tell me parking car, I'm going to say park vehicle, then I'm going to say, I'm going to say two, it's going to say parking motorcycle. If I've got to say one, I'm going to say three, it's going to say uh, cancel parking. So this is what it's going to do. Uh, are we good with that? Okay, return vehicle does not receive or return anything only. So these are the functions that you are writing. So does not receive or return anything, only prints the corresponding message. So, so the rest of this stuff I'm not going to explain until we, I'm not going to give more information until we actually get to it so uh, and I don't think uh, where is find parking I forgot find parking in here huh park vehicle return vehicle list parked vehicles oh I didn't do find parking I want to do it now okay so so this is what happens so uh, two, return vehicle. When you select two, it just shows returning vehicle. Three, it says list park vehicles. Four, it says find vehicle. So these are the, the, the things that are supposed to be done. And I have for, and I missed the find vehicle. So I, I'm going to bring it up to that and do it. So, um, So this is find vehicle function. This function does not read anything and only prints the corresponding mock message. <laughs> That's an easy one to write. So I'm going to save it and uh, uh, and I have to uh, add, increase the version in here because we changed after release. So in here I'm going to increase the version. I'm going to say version 1.1 added find vehicle description okay and save again and remove these there you go added find vehicle and uh, I'll bring up the, the the explanation later on. Uh, let me actually go in here and just show it right away. So I'm going to bring this up and find vehicle, find vehicle. There we go. And add the link for it so people know what we talk about. So this is find vehicle. And that's what we have. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I put it reverse. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's better and there goes to find vehicle there you go and that's that was by for closing parking and end of uh, day for that to actually do the close parking and all those good stuff uh, this is what happens so essentially when you select uh, uh, end of day when you select uh, five that is close parking end of day it's going to tell you this will close the parking all vehicles will be removed and obviously if you enter anything other than yes or no it's not going to uh, accept it 
and then uh, you press Y it means yes I want to close it and it closes now this uh, in the test I the, the program ends here but in the tester um, you will see that uh, I actually uh, run the parking again to just test the sixth that is exit program that works the same way so if you just click six it's gonna say this will terminate the application and save the data either you would say no so it goes back to the func uh, the uh, the menu again or you say yes and you get out and that uh, uh, the difference is that when you actually exit using exit it's gonna say saving data into parking.csv which is uh, the final action that is going to happen so that was a very quick explanation of what happens every time any uh, uh, any uh, when any of these uh, uh, any of these uh, uh, actions are called let me bring this over here um, are we okay down to this point So, going back down to the functions, there you go. Why it keeps jumping back up, I have no idea. I think I have to click over here too, otherwise it's going to jump back up. Um, let me just come over here, where is it? So we are at find vehicle over here. All right. So find vehicle. Then after that is close parking function. So close parking function. Again, it will not do anything. It will just uh, uh, do the instructions of the close parking. So you click over here. It shows exactly what happens. That is inside the uh, explanation up there. It's as as you saw. And the same thing as exit parking function. So uh, these two, these actions of asking for yes and no and all those good stuff, they happen inside the function. And if user says yes, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return uh, false. That's how it, it's going to work out. Load data function. Again, uh, it, re it returns a Boolean. And mm, eventually what it's going to do it's uh, to uh, it will actually try to open the data, uh, data file and load and read and stuff like that but for now in this mockup if the parking is not in a valid empty state uh, it's going to say loading data from and then print the name of the file but it's not going to actually load anything it just shows the message and if the parking is an invalid empty state uh, it prints nothing and just exits and save data the same thing it doesn't receive or return anything unlike bully uh, load data that returns a boolean and uh, it simply says saving data into and prints the name of the, the the data file that we have for public methods we only have run but I put over here other functions if you think other public stuff are needed added I don't think there is any need for any other public stuff but uh, because I'm not using it so even though if even if you are adding another functionality for parking I don't know your choice see if it's needed but you have to have a valid reason for it don't just do it okay so what run will do is essentially run is essentially a big loop and uh, it's it's a user interface and all user interfaces work in this manner which means when you have a root user interface your user interface has something like a boolean say done that is equal to false and in here you have a while not done not done and in here everything that the system is supposed to do will happen so in here uh, uh, titles printed printed and all the things that are supposed to happen every single time in a loop menu is displayed and uh, select uh, in here and then based on the selection you switch based on the selection user selection based on user selection you go case one whatever 
and case two and you keep doing something like this and this is obviously there's a break over here and you keep doing it like this and if in any case you feel that you want to exit so i don't know in, the, in for example in our case in case six right so case case six then in here i would say um i don't know exit program now in here i'm gonna say uh done is true so what happens in this uh, what happens in these type of uh, 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 standard user interface methodology is that it has a flag because we don't know when we are exiting it shows all the things that are supposed to happen every single time then it uh, shows the user gets the action does the action goes back up shows the menu goes back up if any of these menu stuff are supposed to stop the application it simply sets the done to through true and goes out so that essentially is the skeleton logic of run and any other user interface that you the uh, uh, text user interface that you deal with uh, are we okay with this so as i mentioned Ron calls the parking status function, which is printing the titles and stuff, uh, and then displays the parking and waits for user response. Uh, then, based on the response of one, two, or three, or four, it prints the proper, it, it calls the proper function, and therefore the functions are calling, displaying the proper messages, and everything is done. If five is selected, again, it calls the function that has all those yes or no's and returns true or false. And based on that true or false, you set the done to the value that you want. And why? And it will exit the program or it won't if user says no. So three and four are essentially something like this, the one that is uh, deciding if the program stops or not. So uh, I'm explaining over here what closing the parking is and everything that I already talked about it. And I'm saying that exiting the program is an act like a pause and you can restart it. Uh, these these are not to be implemented, it's just FYI for, our input, for your information when you're dealing with the latest uh, milestone of the program. And the other member functions, um, you can write whatever you want. And the tester function is here, as you see. It simply creates a parking and a couple of bad parkings, then runs the bad parkings, which will display those. Uh, yeah. So, uh, where is it? So, I don't know why that, that got open, but yeah. Oh, here it is. So, looking at the tester program, you will see how it runs. So, uh, essentially, it um, at the top over here says loading data from yada yada. That's when this parking is being, being getting created. Then the two bad parkings are created. It says error in data file, error in data file. Then it uh, uh, the, the, the parking that is valid is running. So, it says valet parking and then shows the menu and the whole the story that I explained happens. And then when this program exits the first time, so I'm gonna put five over here and I'm gonna say yes. These at signs are shown, that's this line. And it runs one more time to test the next exit uh, because it exits in two different ways. That's why, well, we, we ran the program twice. And that's that, and that's to your tester. Very simple and straightforward. Any questions? Let it digest for a second, see if you want to actually... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, John Wan, go ahead. You're in listen only. I can't... I don't know how to answer your question. Uh, Li Chang, if you have a question, type it. And also, Li Chang, you're, you are in... Uh, and I, I think they're just answering yes because I said answer, so... Anyways, if you have a question, type something. If not, then 
uh, we're gonna stop this and start uh, finishing the thing I clicked wrong oh, okay all right so all right. Oh, oh, father, by the way I, I just want to ask because uh, well we talk about private and public before yeah mm -hmm. so what about um, the menu because I think I uh, for the milestone one for the menu I mostly written in uh, public it's just a few private functions uh, it's it's very simple logic behind it are the functions used anywhere else other than inside menu if the answer is yes that's public if only menu is utilizing it then even if i tell you it's pu public make it private you follow what i'm okay. saying so it's like all constructors and things should be uh, private yeah constructor for the menu for the item menu, should yeah. be yes everything has to be private Oh, okay then. But right. menu, I don't know. I I don't recall. But I think menu only has uh, one 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 public function too, right? It has a run or something, and and an integer yep. cast, right? Okay. All right. Good question. Anyone else? Any question one? Any question two? Hello, Friday. Yes. Ken, go. Go ahead. Uh, this for this stuff for milestone one. Uh, I I know that there wasn't any instruction on that we need to use dynamic memory allocation for milestone one. But if we did do, if you did, okay, sure. but will there be any any problem? If you use dynamic memory allocation. No, I don't think so. And you made the copying, uh, denied copying, correct? Yeah. Sure. If if you did it, fine. No problem. I just wanted to make okay. everybody's life easier. Thank you. Not to have, because it was the first thing. I wanted to be done something like the first, um, uh, like for week, and, week four and five, something when we learned constructors. So that's milestone one. Milestone two went into dynamic memory allocation and all the uh, classes with resources. Milestone number three is going to go to virtual functions, abstract based classes, and so so on and so forth. Milestone number four will be uh, derived classes with resources, uh, templates probably, and then uh, milestone number five will put everything together and becomes your application. Okay. Okay. Again. Thank you. Um, uh, to, uh, to, to give you a, um, a clear answer on what you asked you, projects the project that you are doing is replacing the DIY sections of your workshops so it's extremely open-ended um, the reason that I'm not asking you to utilize all your knowledge because I want you to don't many of the students will feel panic when they see humongous amount of stuff are coming so I'll try to make it simple if you want to make improvements and do uh, like make everything dynamic make sure that there's no limit for stuff and do proper uh, like add bells and whistles do it but make sure that you reflect about all these things in your workshop reflections because if you notice your workshop part two it's only a reflection that you are giving and that reflection is not only for the workshop but what you have done in your uh, project too. In a final submission, you have a reflection for the project too that you're going to mention all these things, all the additional stuff. But it's a good idea to add it to your workshop uh, reflections too. And if you do extra stuff that makes your uh, program more uh, versatile and better to work with and more efficient, obviously I'm going to add, add some uh, uh, bonus marks to you. There's no, no question about that. Okay. All right. Uh, any other question? Any question one? Any question two? All right. So let me just stop the recording right over here for the because this is an overview for the for the. Uh, for the uh, project and I'm just going to save it so I'm going to say um